Look, I, I think I'd, I'd probably start off with a, a father of three. Uh, forget the job, forget the title, father of three, um, daughter of eight, uh, two um, boys in their 20s, but both have quite severe learning difficulties. Um, but they bring a richness into my life that, that uh, normal children might not do sometimes. And I suppose that I, I start there because that frames who I am. Um, I had the chance to come and work for the co-op eight years ago. Uh, in truth, I didn't quite realise what the co-op was all about until I got here and started to realise that um, there was a soul to it that other corporates didn't have. With both my, my sons, who um, Josh is 27 and Connor's 25, but they've got a mental age of five, you start to realise how the system doesn't work for them. Um, and it's okay when they're little babies and growing up, but actually when they become full grown adults um, and how difficult that is for them to be accepted in society, it, it does really pull, uh, uh, certainly in my heartstrings about, well, what, what difference can I make in this job in that whole area of being accepted if you're a little bit different? And, and I think as a consequence of those two things, that's where the energy uh, the passion comes from. I've always believed that the co-op is only as successful as the people that work in it. And therefore, if they can hear me speaking on these issues, but also more importantly, doing something about it, then they will relish working at the co-op. When we first looked at this issue uh, a few years back, the easiest thing would have been to have gone on on a recruiting exercise and ticked the box and had X number of um, uh, BAME individuals or individuals from ethnic minorities join the co-op. That would have been a disaster. Those people, we wouldn't have had the infrastructure to look after them and make them flourish and grow. And uh, our prejudices would have got in the way and they would have gone. We've been spending the last two years building a framework of understanding and an environment of awareness so that now actually we've got the toolkits in place to help them flourish and come through. And when we then partner in future, that we partner with people that have similar values in this space and for the first time start to make commercial decisions about not partnering with people that don't share our ambition and drive to make a fairer world, which comes back to the vision of the co-op, cooperating for a fairer world. So there's a real beautiful thread between our, our vision, cooperating for a fairer world, our purpose, championing a better way of doing business for you and your community, into this whole issue of inclusion. The only good thing that's come out of COVID-19 is that it's become a landscape for the co-op's difference and vision. But in that space of hyperlocal, the power of community, the power of um, facing into the inequality gap that's now starting to emerge as COVID has shone a light on the unfairness of race, basic living standards, uh, need for education and skills. Um, th those are the, the that's that backdrop has enabled co-op to now leap forward and do what it's always done. But we need to do it in a more agile way um, and faster than we've ever done it before. I think I'm blessed to do the job that I'm doing and to face into these important issues like inclusion uh, and the inequality gap that's starting to widen. Uh, and I love my job and I love the people that I work with.